Hello everyone, welcome to Yellow Pages Nursing. In today's video, we will be discussing about respiratory hygiene. Before entering into the session, if you have not subscribed our channel, please subscribe our channel and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Let's get into the session. The learning objectives we will be discussing in this session will be what is respiratory hygiene? Difference between airborne and droplet transmission. What are the key components of respiratory hygiene? Let's get into the topic. Now, what is respiratory hygiene or cuff etiquette? Respiratory hygiene, also known as cuff etiquette, refers to a set of practices and measures designed to limit the transmission of respiratory pathogens spread by droplet or airborne routes. Before discussing into the respiratory hygiene practices, let's discuss about the difference between airborne and droplet transmission. Airborne transmission is a mode of disease transmission in which infectious agents such as bacteria or viruses are spread through small respiratory droplets which are less than 5 micron in diameter that remain suspended in the air and can be inhaled by others. Whereas, Droplet transmission is a mode of disease transmission in which infectious agents such as bacteria or viruses are spread through larger respiratory droplets more than 5 micron in diameter expelled by an infected person. In airborne transmission, germs are released and suspended in the air as a person talks, coughs or sneezes. These germs may land on the eyes mouth or nose of another person and therefore infect them. In droplet transmission, germs are transmitted through tiny droplets that are cuffed or sneezed out from a sick person. This will get into contact on the eyes, nose or mouth of another person. In airborne transmission, the distance of transmission is more than 6 feet whereas in droplet, the distance of transmission will be less than 6 feet. Examples of some of the airborne diseases include tuberculosis, measles, chickenpox, etc. And examples of droplet transmitter diseases include common cold, influenza, COVID-19, etc. Now, from this picture, you can easily understand the difference between airborne and droplet transmission. In airborne transmission, smaller droplets that is droplet nuclei or aerosols are less than 5 micron in diameter as explained before and they remain suspended in the air for longer periods. Whereas in droplet transmission, larger droplets are present which are more than 5 micron in diameter and they tend to quickly fall to the surfaces. Here comes the key components of respiratory hygiene. Coughing and sneezing etiquette includes covering the mouth and nose. Cover the mouth and nose with the tissue or handkerchief or with the elbows when coughing or sneezing. This helps to contain respiratory droplets and prevents them from being released into the air or into the surfaces. Next is proper tissue use or disposal. Dispose the used tissue immediately in a closed bin. Next comes the most important hand hygiene. Wash hands thoroughly with soap and water or use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer after having contact with the respiratory secretions. Next is use of face mask. Place mask to the patient who have cough and other respiratory symptoms. Nurses are encouraged to wear mask if they have cough and other respiratory symptoms. Wearing masks can provide an additional layer of protection by reducing the release of respiratory droplets into the environment. Next, avoid touching the face. Avoid touching the face, especially eyes, nose, and mouth, as these are entry points for respiratory pathogens. Touching contaminated surfaces and then touching the face can increase the risk of infection. 
Next is maintaining physical distance. Maintain a safe distance from others, particularly if they are coughing, sneezing, or showing symptoms of a respiratory illness. Keeping a distance of at least one meter or three feet can help reduce the risk of a respiratory droplet transmission. Next comes environmental hygiene. Regularly clean and disinfect frequently touch surfaces and objects such as doorknobs, handles, and biomedical devices to minimize the survival and spread of respiratory pathogens. So, so far we have discussed what is respiratory hygiene, difference between airborne and droplet transmission, what are the key components of respiratory hygiene. Respiratory hygiene practices are important for both individuals and communities to prevent the spread of respiratory illnesses, including those caused by viruses like influenza, common cold, etc. So here you go with the respiratory hygiene or cuff etiquette. If you find this video useful, please like it, share it, and subscribe it, and do not forget to hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.